Okay, yesterday, really, we did this yesterday, but um, <clears throat> we, I, it got cut off short. Not important why. Here we go. So what did we say yesterday? Simply, we have to, this, we did this, we did this first paragraph yesterday, but we'll do it over again. Simply, and there's also a sikha of the Rebbe I want to learn here. Simply what, should, what we should do, we should announce and advertise everyone, everywhere, in words that come from the heart, that God is saying to us, to every single Jew, look, I am putting in front of you today a blessing. What's the biggest blessing is the blessing until we will see with our eyes the future redemption, the true future redemption of the Jewish people, and from that, the whole entire world. And again, to remember that what is this idea of redemption, that the good inside of everyone is now trapped, and it'll all be released. There'll be more love in the world, more honesty in the world, more integrity in the world, more happiness in the world, more productivity, positiveness, uniqueness. Every single human being is unique. It'll, that's the idea of the future redemption. More godliness. The creator will be revealed in the creation. Yeshlo, see if we can even add on, Shehach Razad, this advertising that were made, it has to be by means of these people, that even those people that say that they do not yet understand what is this whole thing of the redemption and all this, nevertheless, says, announce it. The key in Shagam Islam, because also there is also every Jew has faith. As Yocholim, they are able, and therefore they must the farsim to advertise to others. Even from his house. Shavarai certainly, even his household. Beginning from the people of his household. So certainly, they don't have to suffer from the fact that the one that's the, the, the father of the home he doesn't really feel the necessity for the redemption, or he doesn't feel that we're in, particularly we're in exile. Other people have to suffer because the fact is, is that they are. Call Elish and Imsim Vivo. Everyone that's found in his <clears throat> in his proximity, call each and every Jew. But Vadai certainly that if you make effort to advertise godliness. You kablu with the varim, and people will see that you're saying the truth. The ifalu pull atom, and it'll have an effect on everyone, even an effect on you. She yuchlad etzlo b'peninius. Right? I remember there was a couple of fellows in the yeshiva. I took them out on Friday to do tefillin, to put tefillin on people in the. These fellows, they came, anyway, they themselves had to force themselves to put on, they just did it because they were in the yeshiva. So I took them out, and I said, you know, when somebody says they want to put on tefillin, you put on them. And if you want to go up to a person with tefillin, I said, I don't want to go up to a person and ask them on tefillin, I don't even want to put on myself. He says, go, you'll, you'll see, it works. So they saw, I went, and I asked people, and people did it, and then they I said, okay, you put tefillin on uh, You go and ask. He goes and asks. Afterwards, we came back. The fellow said, you know, maybe there is something to this to fill in afterwards. You know. After all, you know, I see that people really enjoyed Jews, non-religious Jews. They enjoyed putting on to fill in. I mean, they didn't do it as a religious ritual in the middle of the street in front of everybody. These guys are not religious, you know. What are they doing? Maybe there really is something there. So in other words, if you do the truth, even if you don't believe in it, but it's true. <laughs> because it's true, then it'll start to have an effect on you as well. I'm not saying that that just because there's an effect on people, because there's a lot of liars and con men and things like that, that also don't really believe what they're doing. And they're doing falseness. And you see all these religions are based on falsehoods and things like that. And you know it convinces people. But nevertheless, by doing something that is true, just because it works in things that aren't true, doesn't mean that, it, that, that everything is not true. No. Says the Rebbe that the fact is that we're in exile. The fact is, is that it all depends on us to get out. 
The fact is, is that we have to hope and expect that any second now there's going to be, there is such a thing as this redemption and revealing of good in the world. And any second that's supposed to happen, go and tell everyone that God has given us a blessing and that it could be in one second, this redemption is coming. Right? Just have to expect it and do everything possible to bring it. He wrote so maybe God's will. Shemia Dibur, the call now, that from just talking about what we said before, what we said, the Gula Amitit Vashlema, this blessing of the future and true redemption, just talking about it, as from just talking about it, will bring this immediately. On this Shabbat, the Rebbe speaking on Shabbat, uh, of course, this was not recorded on Shabbat. The, the Hasidim used to have tremendous memories. There's one of them, they used to have, they still do, but the Rebbe is not speaking. Just just uh, a few days ago, what is it? Passed away one of the men with the best, one of the best memories of all. You know, he could remember tremendous amounts. Rabbi Yol Khan, a blessed memory. And he could remember like, you know, 10 hours of speeches of the Rebbe. Incredible. And that's what, the, the, this is the result. That on this Shabbat, there should be the Gula Mita Tishlema, a total redemption by means of the Mashiach Tzikinu, a poor mamish, actually. Obafran, and especially when you connect this with saying L'chaim, and a Fabringen, a Hasidic Fabringen. And there's a lot of people in the Beit HaKnesset, and Beit HaKnesset, and Beit HaMidrash, Beit Ma'asim Tovim, place where of the previous Lubavitch Rebbe, that's in 770. L'chaim, L'chaim, says the Rebbe, L'chaim, L'chaim will leave Racha. There should be life and blessing. The call of Masubim Khan to everyone who's here, by Al Yadamba, by means of this, to all the Jewish people, wherever they are. We break Kulana that all, we should all be blessed with all the blessings, and especially the blessing of this week, Ra'e, to see, Anochi, I, God Himself, notain and giving before you, inside of you, today, this blessing. <clears throat> and especially the blessing of a Kasiv of a Kasim Tova. They should be written and sealed for a good and a sweet new year. How much more? So, the blessing, the main blessing, Gula Mitit Vishlema, the future redemption by means of Mashiach Tzikenu. But often the call, everyone will point with their finger and say, hey, see, look, I can see godliness. Look, I'm healthy. And like it says in the Torah, in the end of the parsha, Zota Bracha Asher Berach Moshe, that we read in Simcha Torah, in Simcha Torah, in the end of Chaga Sukkot, that's what it talks about. And in our Torah reading, it says all the holidays there. Le'ne call Yisrael, like it says, before the eyes of all Jews. It says that the Beginning of the Torah is connected to the end of the Torah. Breshit Bora, that's the beginning of the Torah. God created the heavens and the earth. At the Shemayim, that there'll be a new heavens and a new earth that I'm going to make. Like it says in the half Torah of Shabbos, Rosh Chodesh. This Shabbos we don't read. It says there's going to be, God's going to make a new heavens and a new earth. <clears throat> what does that mean? It means we'll see the godliness, like the new Torah. It says there's going to be a new Torah. None of the laws of the Torah are going to change. We'll just see the godliness in everything. Same thing, the new heavens and the new earth doesn't mean there's not going to be any moon anymore. Or there's going to be seven suns or something. No, we'll just see that God is creating all these things. And he's going to see why. We'll, we'll see why. What a miracle creation is. The Cain, to yeah, Lano, and so it should be to us. All these things that the Rebbe is talking about, he's talking about reality. It's not just talking about religion. You know, this is the ideal, and one day it will come, and it will happen. This is a thing that should have happened a long time ago, and we're expecting it should happen right now. It's amazing miracles from the hand of God. And you can say, ah, oh, come on, what are you talking about? But the fact of the matter is, is that life itself is an amazing miracle. We just got used to it. We just got used to it. Right? <clears throat> if you would come to a city that, let's say, was totally destroyed, and everyone in the city was killed, and you went to the city, and all of a sudden, in one second, all of a sudden, the city just got boop, rebuilt. And the people are just alive. 
That's incredible. It would be in all the news, right? You go to Hiroshima or something after the, <clears throat> the bomb was dropped, and the place is just leveled out. Everybody was killed. Suddenly, somebody comes down and snaps his fingers, and all of a sudden, everybody just comes back to life, and all the buildings are there, and everything, a big miracle. Well, the fact of the matter is, go outside, and you'll see there's people alive, and there's big buildings, and they're standing up. It's a miracle. How are they all standing there? Right? It's just a miracle. Everything has been created from nothing, but we get used to it. We get used to it, so we don't see the miracle. If God can do that miracle, and he can create everything constantly from absolutely nothing, and he can do it every single second, he keeps us alive, and he creates us an amazing miracle, right? So <clears throat> just that God will reveal himself in a way, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a less of a miracle. The fact is it's going to be infinitely greater. Something like the Jews leaving Egypt, right? The Jews leaving Egypt it was an amazing miracle. But the fact that God is creating them was a bigger miracle. It just, it's a miracle you get used to. That's called nature. So it says, just like the Jews, God took us out of Egypt, and he did it in one day, as this future redemption is going to happen in one instant. It's going to be something that's going to be so incredible, and it's going to be also something that we're never going to get used to. We're going to feel the novelty and the, the, and the, 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 how do you say, the, the freshness of God's love every instant, in every single detail of creation. So it should be to us. Shabaham Shachayitz Chachas Abriyas Baruch Shana. So it should be in the creation of the world for Sardin Rosh Shana. Niflo Terenu. I'm I'm sorry. Abriyah Baruch Shana. That we're now in the Rosh Shana of this year, which is Niflo Terenu. In our year, it's called Plaot Terenu. There will be a brand new light. Every Rosh Hashanah, there's a brand new light that never shined before in the world. I mean, so this will merit. And this Rosh Shabbos Chodesh, Shabbos Chodesh, which the day after is going to be Rosh Chodesh Elul, the beginning of making this self introspection of the whole year. And the whole world will be created brand new and the ultimate completion. And it says there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth that I am going to make together with a new Torah that God is going to make. What does it mean? The same thing. There'll be godliness. We'll see the godliness in every aspect, every word of the Torah. Like it says, Torah chadashem iti teitze. And call the kahal ona, and everyone should say amen. Like the rabbis say, God alone, amen. It's greater to say amen than it is even the one who answers Amen is greater than the one who makes the blessing. Ba'ovin shall govrim notzchim Amen kein yiratzon that we will overpower, we will be victorious. And we'll say, may this be God's will that all of this should be revealed right now. Let's go 